Hello everyone and welcome to my full impressions video of Audio Lab's newest addition to their integrated amplifiers, the 7000A, which is basically a two-channel stereo integrated amplifier with class AB power, giving us a total of 70 watts of power in the 8 ohms and 110 watts of power in the 4 ohms. Now, Audio Lab claims that the new 7000A is their upgraded and more modernized version of their previous integrated amplifier, the 6000A. Now, I do have the 6000A right here down below the 7000A. And you all, I had so much fun comparing the two against each other. You look over here on the right hand side, uh, on top of my KEF LS50 Meta speaker, I had the Duke Audio One Little Bear switch box. That switch box allows me to switch between two different integrated amplifiers on the fly using a remote control, and that was so much fun. And yes, one of the first things you're going to notice with the 7000A over the 6000A is yes, you got 20 watts of more power in the 8 ohms and up to 35 watts of more power in the 4 ohms. So yes, you're getting a little bit better bass attack. You're getting a little bit more of that uh, flesh and body sound. You're getting better dynamic range. So basically overall, the 7000A gives you a little bit more headroom. Now when I first reviewed the 6000A about three years ago, I told people, hey, this amplifier needs to be paired up to speakers that are very efficient, meaning easy to drive. And I was recommending speakers like Clips or JBL that was, you know, JBLs that are easy to drive or Tecton speakers. And I really always wanted to hear Clips' heritage speakers with the 6000A, which Andrew Robinson mentioned that in his video Thank you, Andrew. I knew it was a good match. But anyways, when it comes to the new 7000A, you know, I would actually recommend speakers that are moderately to easy to drive. Meaning, with the 6000A, I told people in my review, do not pair up a speaker that goes below 90 or 89 dB is pushing it. You want really efficient speakers. But with the new 7000A, I would recommend speakers that are above 86 dB and speakers that don't dip down way below 4 ohms. Now, yes, the 7000A to be at almost 20 pounds, yes, it has, you know, that body and that weight and that base that you would get normally from 25 to 30 pound integrated amplifiers. But the 7000A is not a powerhouse. It is not a high current amp. It's not going to be driving any speakers like MagnaPants. Now, you can hook up a hard-to-drive speaker to the 7000A like I did, and then you can sit there and crank the shit out of the volume, and the amplifier is going to really warm up. But if you try to drive very hard-to-drive speakers, then the 7000A is probably going to sound a little lean. Now, most speakers nowadays are above 86 dB, and most of them don't drop in those crazy impedance dips below 4 ohms. I mean, the 7000A drops the shit out of my Kef LS50 speakers. I even posted a video of how well the 7000A on a short video, how it drove the hell out of my Kef Q350s. And the 7000A even handled my uh, Dyn Audio Emmet 50 tower speakers that I just got done reviewing. And those Dyn Audios are 86 dB efficient and 4 ohms. And I'm telling you, the 7000A drove them effortlessly. I was really shocked about that. That really shocked me. But again, it is no powerhouse. Now, besides, you know, the 7000A having more power than the 6000A, the second biggest feature to me, you all, is the built-in DAC. Now, the engineers over at Audio Lab have been building around the ESS Saber 32-bit Hyper Stream DAC chip for 14 years, you all. That's right, 14 years. And the new 7000A has the 9038Q2M DAC chip, which it will decode PCM up to 32 bits, 768 kilohertz, DCD up to 512, and it will do all three unfolds of MQA. It just doesn't do MQA render. Now, I am a Tidal Hi-Fi Plus member. I do listen to a lot of MQA files, but Tidal is uh, leaning more towards uh, FLAC files now. Uh, most FLAC files at 24-bit and 192 kilohertz. But another awesome thing with this new DAC, you all, is we do have HDMI ARC 
input, which means audio return channel. And this is going to be so huge for people out there. It was even huge for me because I could run my HDMI arc coming out of my TV straight into the back of the 7000A. And I have a smart TV, so I have a lot of different music apps on there. And I tell you, I really like the HDMI input as well. The 6000A didn't come with an HDMI input. The 6000A here below, it only came with two coaxial and two toss links. And the new 7000A, we actually have a USB input. USB B input. And I love this USB input. This is where you're going to get more of your high resolution kind of files. I love USB so much, you all. And one of the funnest things I did have with the 7000A, and of course it has two coaxial and two toss link, is when I was comparing the internal DAC against my outboard DACs. I buy a lot of outboard DACs, you all. And the first one I wanted to compare against the 7000A's built-in DAC was my On X8 Magic DAC. That DAC's about $325 US, but you can switch out the op amps inside. And that is actually a lot of fun. Now, two of the things that I used as transports when I was comparing that outboard DAC on against the 7000A's built-in DAC, I was using down here, as you can see, I had the new AudioLab CDT 7000. That's a compact disc transport. That allowed me to compare them in coaxial output. But I used my new laptop that has all kinds of USB 3.0 outputs. I used it when I was actually comparing the two DACs. And I'm going to tell you all just plain and simple. The built-in DAC on the 7000A was about a level above in total performance against the On X8 Magic DAC. I was like, oh shit, this is the best sounding integrated DAC that I've heard on an integrated amp ever in my life under $2,000 US. So I went over and got one of my reference DACs. This is the Denifrips Ares 2R2R DAC. About a $700 DAC, and I wanted to compare it against the 7008. And you all, I done this for a full two days. And what really shocked me, just to make it simple, is the built in DAC was on that same playing field as the Denifrips. Now, the Denifrips, yes, it sounded a little bit smoother, vocals were a little bit more natural, uh, had a little bit better depth when it came to imaging, but the built-in DAC of the 7000A had more openness, it had more space, it had better sparkle, it had better layering, and the bass attack had more impact. I was like, oh my goodness. Now, when it comes to DACs, one thing I will tell you all, when you get real close in performance in DACs, it's really going to come down to what speakers you have. Now, I'm not going to sit here and tell you that the built-in DAC of the 7000A beat the Denifrips Ares 2, but I am going to tell you it competed with it. Now, remember what Audio Lab said, that the 7000A is their upgraded and more modern version of the 6000A. Well, so is that price point. The 7000A over here in the U.S. has an MSRP price point of $1,799 U.S. And in my opinion, that is a fair deal. You know, it is not a giant killer. By no means is it a giant killer. At that price, you are getting what you paid for. But when I've done a little bit of research looking at the pricing of the 7000A, I did see Audio Advisor and Hi-Fi Heaven Every once in a while, they have a sale on the 7000A at $1,450 US. And at that price point, that's a pretty killer deal, y'all. I mean, if you buy the Audio Lab, you best be using its built in DAC. And having that HDMI and USB just put a big, huge smile on my face. I mean, Audio Lab has got it together with their built in DACs. Again, they've been building the circuitry and the power supply around the ESS Sabre 32-bit HyperStream DAC chip for 14 years. I mean, they got that synergy of DAC preamp and integrated amp really together in the new 7000A. So now let's talk about what the 7000A sounds like, TJ. Well, y'all, this makes number six 
amplifier I've had from Audio Lab, y'all. First, I had the 6000A, then the 8300A, then the Omnia, then the 8300XP, then I had that, uh, what was it, DAC Magic. It was just a little bitty integrated amp, and now I have the 7000A. And I'm going to say the same thing about the 7000A as I have with most of that Audio Lab sound, which is that British flavor, y'all. Audio Lab, being a British company, like to incorporate that British flavor that I call natural, relaxed, and mature sounding. Now, what I mean by this, for instance, let's take the top end frequencies of the 7000A. To me, it has a really mature and relaxed top end. When I compare the 7000A against my amplifiers like Yamaha, Shit Audio, Emotiva and even IOTA Electronics, yes, all those amplifiers had a little bit more presence in the top end. Now, I by no means are telling you all that the 7000A sounds lush or that it sounds smooth, and nor does it sound soft. It still has plenty of crisp clarity in that top end. It just doesn't sound forced. And I think that's one thing so many people love about the 7000A, is that you can pair it up to such a wide range of speakers. Speakers like Monitor Audio, uh, B&W, Clips, Triangle, Kef, Focal. These speakers are do sound a little bit more on the bright side or have more extension up top than your average speaker, the 7000A gives it a little bit of that mature sound to it. Now let's talk about the mid-range of the 7000A. To me, it is very, uh, it is fairly neutral and analytical. Yes, this is an analytical sounding integrated amp. But the mid-range doesn't sound warm to me. It doesn't sound cool to me. It just sounds fairly neutral. Now, with the 6000A below, I would call it lean and clean sounding in the mid-range. In the mid-range of the 7000A, we do have a, just a little bit more flesh and body. It's still almost close to sounding lean, but it's just really clean and analytical sounding. So when I was pairing it up to speakers, normally, not always, that have kind of like a thick cone material to them, normally those speakers have more of that um, thick, kind of dense, kind of robust sound to them. When I was hooking the 7000A up to speakers like that, it done such a great job, y'all, with instrument separation. I mean, even the overall layering, the sound stage, the imaging, the 7000A really shocked me. Now, I know people are going to say, oh, well, TJ, when it comes to imaging and it comes to sound state, that's going to have a lot to do with your speakers. And I'll agree with you all 100%. But your amplifier does influence this as well. A big influence when it comes to imaging. Now, just to give you all a, a place of reference, my Marantz PM8006 integrated amp that I reviewed about a year and a half, two years ago. That has been one of my favorite pure analog integrated amplifiers that when it comes to imaging, that Marantz is an imaging monster, y'all. And when it came to the mid-range, it did have a fuller, more meteor sounding mid-range than the 7000A. But when it comes to the mid-range with the 7000A, it's a little bit cleaner. You know, it really pops out those micro details really well. And I will say the Marantz PM8006 did do a little bit better of a job of imaging than the 7000A, but <laughs> make no mistake about it, the 7000A was right on that Marantz's ass. Now, let's talk about the 8300A uh, that I actually reviewed about a year and a half ago as well. That integrated amp, pure analog, um, just like the Marantz. Now, the 7000A is what I call feature rich because it has a DAC, a phono, EQ, and the Bluetooth, and a headphone amplifier as well. But anyways, when I would... Uh, comparing that 8300A to the 7000A, that 8300A was $1,800 US back in 2015. Now that is was actually a dual mono integrated amplifier. It had eight output stage transistors and the new 9000A will actually took its place. But anyways, comparing that 8300A to the 7000A, yes, that 8300A was one of the most transparent cleanest sounding integrated amplifiers I have experienced. 
and it did have a little bit more sweetness in the top end than the 7000A. But the 7000A does have a little bit more of a meaty base to it. It does have just a little bit more color than the 8300A did. But I tell you all something, it's like the 7000A almost fell right in between the Marantz PM8006 and the Audio Lab 8300. You know, overall, to me, it is so fairly neutral sounding. And when it comes to the bass, oh, this is one of the stars of the show for me besides the top end. The bass is articulate bass. If you are driving speakers that the 7000A is capable of driving, yes, y'all, that bass was fast, tight, good impact, good dynamic range. I mean, overall, I am impressed with the 7000A. And when it comes to that balance of sound, yes, the 7000A is very well balanced. There's no boosted treble, no boosted bass, no recessed mid-range. You just have that flat plane all the way across. My Marantz PM8006, it had that V-shaped sound character to it. Some people like that boosted bass and boosted treble. But the one good thing about the 7000A is when you get an amplifier that sounds really... Uh, that sounds really leveled it's really balanced you get that really good mid-range purity to it and that's one thing i will say about the 7000a is it has such good mid-range purity to it i mean she's a sweetheart and i do still have the display uh tape over top that's this little piece you see over I'm leaving it on there because Jam Industries, a division of American Audio and Videos, very own Joe and Natalia sent me the 7000A on a loan lease agreement so we can have this video today. So let's give Joe and Natalia a big hand. I appreciate you all. They sent me all six of Audio Lab amplifiers. And that was the, the MDAC. Yeah, the M1 or the MDAC that I had, the one I didn't review. It was more for a desktop. It was only 40 watts. It, 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 it was a little bitty amp, so I, I didn't review it. But anyways, y'all, now let's have that close-up look of the 7000A because I got some... Okay, everyone, it is now time for that close-up look of the 7000A that I have sitting on top. Right below it, I do have the 6000A because I wanted you all to see aesthetically they look exactly the same. But one of the first things you're going to notice different with the 7000A is this new high-resolution display screen that is even bigger than the 6000A's display screen. And we have more display options as well. The second thing that is different is the rotary knobs on the front. The three rotary knobs on the 7000A, they are a little bit uh, longer, but the circumference is a little bit not as round. And the 7000A's, all three of their rotary knobs do have more resistance to them. Thirdly, the cooling vents on top. Uh, Audio Lab changed it on the 7000A. As you can see, they're not as long as the ones down here on the 6000A, but they are wider. And on the 7000A, these cooling vents exactly match the heat sinks inside, which I thought was really cool. Now, let's go over dimensions very quickly. Again, the 7000A weighs one and a half pounds more than the 6000A, but dimensionally, they're exactly the same size. Now, when I measured how deep the amplifier is from the very front of the knob to the back of the five-way binding post, I got 13 inches or 335 millimeters. Now, when we measure from one side all the way to the other side, I got 17 and a half inches or 445 millimeters. And it sets up about three inches tall or about 90.5 millimeters in length. Okay, now a closer look on the 7000A. Over on the far left hand side, we have our selector knob. And what this is going to select all your different inputs, whether it's analog or digital. There's PC, USB, optical one, optical two, coax one, coax two, arc, which is your HDMI, auxiliary one, auxiliary two, three, and we have our phono EQ. This background is what they call their home screen, and it's pretty cool when you're playing music that does move around. And next to that, we actually have our mode. Our mode is going to let us set it, you know, integrated amp, or you can use it as a dedicated preamp, or you can use it just as a power amplifier. They call it pre-power. Then over here, we have our volume control, and this is what your volume looks like, and I can see this from across the room. And then over here, we have our headphone um, amplifier output, and 
Audiolab did incorporate a dedicated headphone amp inside the 7000A instead of tapping off the main amplifier. Now the headphones I always use testing out any kind of headphone amplifier is my Mass Drop HD, let me get that in better for you all, 6XXX. And these headphones do like a little bit of power. And I will say overall, the headphone amplifier, it's okay. But it's nothing to write home to your mama about. And over here, we have a remote sensor. Then we have our standby button. Remember to turn the main power off the 7000A. On the back, we have a main toggle power switch in the back. Now, let's go ahead and go through all the different uh, features we have through the display. Now, this... I, you really have to do it fast, so if I mess up a little bit, just hold on with me there. First, I'm going to push this in. First thing come up is the filter. I'm going to go ahead and go to filter. These are your digital filters for your DAC. We have five different digital filters. The previous model, 6000A, only came with uh, three filters. Then we have up sampling. You can turn it off or on. And then we have our DPLL, which will do normal or wide. I went back and forth with that, and I could barely tell a difference. Let's go back one more. It's going to put me on wide. I got to go over and push this button. That's okay. I told you all it, it, it is. Here's your balance. I had it already on one side because I've already practiced this once, but there's your balance control. And then we have our input sensitivity for our analog inputs. You all, this is huge. This is an audio file feature, in my opinion. And what this does is your analog inputs, let's say I'm using my old school from 1987, my Sony CDP605 ESD CD player. That CD player puts out such a hot signal that it's actually too hot. It's like 2.1, 2.2 volts. So when I hook it up to the 7000A, it actually compresses the dynamics a little bit. So I can actually go in here and I could add 6dB or take 6dB away. And as you all can see, I actually put it on negative 2 dB. And that allows me to get better dynamic range. But you see, this is just for your auxiliaries and your phono. So if you're playing a record pl player, and let's say you got a really cold input, meaning it's not a very hot input, you know the overall sound could be a little lean or a little bit thin sounding, where you can go in here and you could turn it all the way up to 6 dB, and you're going to get more of that full flesh and body sound. Awesome feature they incorporated with this 7000A. So let's go back in here. Next is your volume control. You can control this from negative 20 dB, uh, 25, 30, 35, 40. So you can set that where you want to so your kids just can't come by and just turn the volume up full blast, which we know they wouldn't do that, right? So I'm going to go over here and exit back out of that again. There's our volume. Then we have our display options. I showed you all the home screen. You all seen the audio lab screen. While I was uh, recording the whole video, we'll go to the VU analog meters. I'll push on that. And I have something to really tell you all about this here. It does take a second to go to it. Now it's going to time out after five seconds and it'll come up. And here's your analog VU meters. In real time, I'm just going to be honest with you. These suck. I'm just keeping it real. I'm not sugarcoating nothing. The ones I actually like are the VU digital meters. We'll go to that. It'll take it just a second. Here, I'll go ahead and exit out. We'll exit out of everything. And these um, digital VU meters are like what you would see on your old tape cassettes. Down below in the description box, I will upload a... A short video link for y'all to go to where I'm showing all of these working. I don't want to play any music during this video because it'll give me a copyright strike. Then we go back in and of course you can turn the display off. You can put it on that home screen or you can just go to Audio Lab. And that is one of my favorite is just having the Audio Lab logo go across. Let's go ahead and exit out of here. We'll hit this one again. Then you have display settings. This is basically, you can turn the brightness up and down. You can only have it on 5 seconds to wait before it switches to the last screen, or you could go up to 30 seconds. Let's exit out of this also. Hit this one more time. Then you have Arc CEC. Basically, to turn this off and on, what this is going to do, if you have a smart TV and you turn this on, it's going to allow you to use your TV's remote control volume to actually turn the volume up and down on your actual um, 
amplifier. That's pretty co cool. Then you get your 12 volt triggers on and off. Then you get your language, your standby. You can reset everything if you want to. This is a version. If Audio Lab ever come with an update, I'll show you the update plug in the back. And then we are back to our digital filters. So, you know, it did come with some really cool features. One of the coolest features for me, again, was that input sensitivity. And that is just in the analog domain. But yes, you all, that input sensitivity right here, this is a very, very awesome feature. Being able to plus or minus 6 dB again, it'll really allow you to tailor what transport you're using or DAX or Phono EQs coming in to the 7000A. But again, I would be using the 7000A's built-in DAC. Okay, y'all, now let's go to the back of the amplifier. One of the first things that I noticed on the back of the 7000A that was different than the 6000A, here's our Power IEC Inlet. We actually have three prongs now. The 6000A only had two prongs, the one on the left and the one on the right. We're actually getting an extra ground with the 7000A for it. So for you people that love to buy those big cables that are three prong, well, there you go. Right below that, we have our inline fuse which say you ever blow a fuse, you could just pop this open and replace the fuse instead of having to take this all apart because it is a booger to take apart. Above that, we have our main power toggle switch. And then here we have the five-way binding post. And they are exactly the same ones on the 6000A. And, you know, I'll be honest with you. I'm not a big fan of using banana plugs with them. And I'm going to have to go freestyle and show you all what happens when I plug in the banana it doesn't plug in all the way. There's still just a little bit of a gap. Let me show y'all. You see it has just a little bit of a gap. Let me get that in better. There we go. I really wished Audio Lab would have upgraded those binding posts. But what I do, I just use a spade, you all. I just put a spade in here and lock that booger completely down. Really easy to do. And you're going to get a much better connection with that spade in my opinion. Sorry for hitting the camera, y'all, but I had to show you that. Then we have our remote uh, trigger outputs. You can hook up two different devices if you want them to go off at the same time that you turn the 7000A off. And then we have our Bluetooth antenna. We do have Bluetooth 5.0, and it does have the new aptX LL, which means low latency, which means it's supposed to give you more of that CD sound quality. It is pretty good to be Bluetooth. And then here is where you have your update where you plug in. Here we have our HDMI ARC, Coaxial 1, Toslink 1, Coaxial 2, Toslink 2, and then we have our USB input. And you can see they shielded it really good with gold-plated or copper. And then here we have our uh, pre-amplifier outputs. Now this is full range, left and right side, so we do not have a dedicated subwoofer output. You could use these if you were using two subwoofers. And next to that, this is your power amp input for home theater bypass. Or if you wanted to use a 7000A just as a power amp, you could hook a preamp up right here like I did with the Freya Plus. And it sounded okay with the Freya Plus. Nothing to write home to your mama about again. Then you have one, two, three analog inputs. And then you have your phono EQ with a really nice ground on the end. Again, we still get that really good build quality. So now you all... It is that time to pop the hood. Okay, you all, I have popped the hood to take you for a deeper dive inside the Audio Lab 7000A. But first, I must warn you, this can be very dangerous and fatal, so please allow me to do this for you. And it can also void your three year warranty the 7000A comes with. And Audio Lab used 18 Torque 7 screws. They're very small. They're put in very tight, and you got to put a lot of downforce on a screwdriver to get them out, or you can strip them out. Now, here is that cover, which is basically the top plate and the side panels made all into one. It just slides off, and you can easily slide it back on. But I know the first thing you all noticed was this very nice built toroidal transformer that's 250 VA which is actually 50 VA larger than the one in the 6000A. This is made by a Norwegian company called Nortel, and Audio Lab uses them in a lot of their amplifiers. 
on top here you can see we have like a little bracket with the in gold the audio lab name and that nut right there you can tighten it down but what impressed me you all is you look underneath the transformer and we have a soft rubber pad that helps absorb any kind of vibrations that's what i call paying close attention to details and yes of course i'm freestyling this now we go over to our filter caps good quality elna some of the best in my opinion we got a total of 60,000 microfarads which gives us 30,000 microfarads into each channel plenty enough for uh 70 watts and the eight ohms then up here we have our omron power relays on the very back where our toggle switch is you see we have some really nice cabling and audio lab used heat shrink wrap tape all the way to the ends of those leads way to go audio lab and below that we had the power iec inlet and as you can see it's completely shielded as well and coming back a little bit where it says test okay basically that is filtering for the power coming in i've seen underneath i've seen resistors capacitors relays and i even seen a very small transformer and down below here we do have two different fuses 250 volts but one of my favorite things you all is this digital board in front of you all it's about twice the size of the one in the 6000a but so is that price point but we have the newer dac chip installed on the 7000a this is the ess saber hyperstream 32 bit dac chip now they call this the hyperstream 2 then right above that you see we have one of our clocks then all around here you'll see different resistors and these are a lot of smds which means surface mounted devices i'm not a big fan of them but it's just in the digital board then we actually have our digital interface xmos which is for a usb i think we got some clockies here too and then over here by texas instrument i am almost 100 percent that is the up sampler for toss link and coax where you can um up sample all the way to 384 kilohertz and right here we have two 8-bit expanders then check this out y'all here is actually your bluetooth uh module you can see the cable runs right on out to the antenna and look how well audio lab shielded that bluetooth that is great and again the bluetooth has that new codex aptx ll low latency another cool thing you all is look at all these standoffs in every corner are made out of metal they're not made out of some kind of cheap plastic now let's check out the phono eq we'll go all the way back here to the back and here is actually your jfit junction field effect transistor then we have two capacitors then we go on up still part of the phono eq we have some red wemas here in the middle we have op amps that are jrc japanese radio company and then in each corner we have four capacitors that are elna and these other capacitors you see that are black with a gold stripe those are chinese made capacitors not as good as the elnas of course here you see we got some more wemas underneath that digital board is actually the preamp board which we just have a lot of switching relays underneath there what i'm noticing throughout this amplifier is that audio lab used the elnas in more critical areas now check this out y'all over here in this corner this is the power supply for the dedicated headphone amplifier which it sounds okay and actually they have some uh, decon capacitors on each side and then we have an elna here that's blue and an elna behind it that you all can't see but what i thought was cool see these little black pieces underneath here that is actual shielding they're actually shielding the headphone amplifier away from the rest of the amplifier so now let's go check out this fully discrete complementary feedback amplifier modules so first off let's start off with the left channel we go over here and look closely this is your amplifier modules but i always call this a driver board and one of the first things you're going to notice here is we actually have a voltage regulator 
we had three transistors. There's one on this other side, but Audio Lab's actually using an aluminum heat sink for that voltage regulator. And on top of this, check this out, y'all. That's your trimmer pot. So maybe 10 years down the road, if you ever get the amplifier serviced, that's actually where they would tune in the DC offset. Here's where they would plug their uh, voltage meter up to. And then if we go back a little bit, you see down here below, this is a very big speaker relay, you all. And that is by Panasonic. And we do have some decon capacitors. But these uh, black and silver ones, I looked all over you all, and I cannot find a name for them. I do see SK initials on it, but that is about it. And another really cool thing about these amplifier modules is if you wanted to take this transistor out right here, which I always thought they were bipolar transistors, bipolar junction transistors, but this being a complementary feedback uh, circuit, these are probably uh, PNP and NPN transistors more than likely they're still nine amps like the 6000a but i can tell you from looking in the 6000a many times these do look a little bit bigger and of course the amplifier module is bigger than a 6000a as well and so is that price point again now here is the right side amplifier module board let's see if i can get you all a good look at those transistors pretty good size now i want to show you all the speaker cable it is about 14 gauge then we do have some heavy duty heat sinks and look here y'all with action with the actual uh board from the transistors they're again using metal standoffs that's great to see so let's look at this speaker cable again it's about 14 gauge and you can see where it runs all the way back to the back and again, they're using shrink wrap tape all the way to the end of the lead. But what I thought was cool is that you could easily upgrade these five-way binding posts. These are the same ones that came on the 6000A. I really wish the Audio Lab would use the new five-way binding post from the new 9000A. But again, I would use spades with this. But easy to upgrade, all you'd have to do is take off that 10 millimeter nut right there. You can go ahead and take the cable off and these will pop right off that would be easy to upgrade you just have to measure it out a little bit now let's go ahead and take a look at the front uh face plate from the inside that is all all aluminum remember i told you all that the potentiometers feel like they have a little bit more resistance they are a little bit different they are metal and you could see the standoffs are actually part of the aluminum faceplate pulling the board away from the front faceplate. Now we'll go on down a little bit more. There's the inside of your ISP screen. There's the other two pots right there, again made out of metal. Again using standoffs, getting this board away from the front faceplate. So altogether, yes, this is a really good built integrated amplifier. And again, if you're interested in buying one, I'd highly recommend auditioning one first. But if you can't, try your best to catch this amplifier on sale at Audio Advisor or even Hi-Fi Heaven. And that pretty much wraps it up for me, you all. Until next time, this is TJ, the Stereo Bargain Vow. Keep on rolling, baby. All right.